Flow Wisdom presents Girl, Wash Hyper Face by Rachel Hollis. Book Summary The Lie Something Else Will Make You Happy. Chapter 1 Life is not supposed to overwhelm you at all times. Life isn't meant to be merely survived, it's meant to be lived. Instances will inevitably feel out of your control, but the moments when you feel like you're drowning are supposed to be brief. They should not be the whole of your existence. The precious life you've been given is like a ship navigating its way across the ocean, and you're meant to be the captain of the vessel. Certainly, there are times when storms toss you around, but that's when you need to fight your way back, to throw all the water off the boat bucket by bucket. That's when you battle to get yourself back to the helm. This is your life. You are meant to be the hero of your own story. This doesn't mean you become selfish. This doesn't mean you discard your faith or quit believing in something greater than yourself. What it means is taking responsibility for your own life and your happiness. Said another way, a harsher, more likely to get me punched in the face way, if you're unhappy, that's on you. When you're engaged and involved and choosing to enjoy your own life, it doesn't matter where you are, or frankly, what negative things get hurled at you. You'll still find happiness because it's not about where you are, but who you are. How to feel happy. Stop comparing yourself. Stop comparing yourself with others. Comparison is the death of joy. You only need to be better than you were yesterday. Surround yourself with positivity. You become who you surround yourself with. You become what you consume. If you find yourself in a slump or feel as though you're living in a negative space, take a good hard look at who and what you see every day. Figure out what makes you happy and do those things. This seems like the most obvious idea in the world, but at the end of the day, very few people intentionally choose the things that bring them joy. Spend more time doing the things that feed your spirit. Remember, you are in charge of your life. The lie. You will start tomorrow. Chapter 2 We talk about the things we'd like to do, be, try, and accomplish, but once we get to the moment of actually doing it, we end up missing that chance. Maybe we've created this habit because of the way we were brought up. Magazines and TV shows spend a lot of time focusing on what to do rather than teaching us how to stay on it in the first place. Life happens, and the plans we make fall through. But when it becomes such a regular occurrence, that the promises we make hold very little actual power in our lives, we need to check ourselves. We promise ourselves that we will improve, but every now and then we end up breaking such promises. If you are regularly doing so, you're not making any progress. You're just talking. If you choose today not to break another promise to yourself, you won't just talk about a goal. You'll plan for how you can meet it. You'll set a goal and surprise yourself when you achieve it. You'll teach yourself a new way to behave and set a standard for the type of person you truly are, not the one you've dreamed of. How to keep your promises? Starting with one small goal. If you were thinking of following a new habit, try to keep that small. Don't jump into spreading too thin. It's much easier to add a habit and to take one away, but the water goal is a challenge. Be careful with your commitments. We easily jump on board with anything that sounds tempting. Assuming the results will motivate us to pursue them, we commit to them. Unfortunately, that isn't always the case, and you end up breaking the commitment. So only commit to things you know you can complete. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself about what you're blowing off. If you take a good hard look at what you've canceled on in the last 30 days, you might be shocked to discover how you're training yourself to behave. The lie. You are not good enough. Chapter 3 the author moves further with an example of her life. She was the youngest and a self-sufficient child, and she thought that the combo of these two things meant that she was largely ignored, unless she did something good. When she succeeded, she was praised and got attention. She felt liked and accepted. But the moment the audience stopped clapping, it all went back to square one. What this taught her as a child, and what she carried into adulthood, is the belief that to be loved, she needed to do something. Fast forward to her thirties, it was nearly impossible for her to sit still. The moment she achieved one goal, she immediately thought, okay, what next? 
She struggled to celebrate any victory, no matter how big, because she was always mindful of something bigger she could be doing instead. The need to prove her worth, coupled with the fact that she is good at her career, made her a workaholic. Yet she had no idea that her work was grievously affecting her health. She soon started developing symptoms of vertigo. She felt dizzy throughout the day, her eyes had trouble focusing, and she spent most of the time feeling nauseous. She visited many doctors, but no one could tell the exact reason for her condition. At last, she visited a homeopathic doctor. He pointed out that her vertigo had come on for the first time when she was under extreme stress at work. The doctor advised her to take rest and do nothing. She went home and did everything that gave her happiness, not tried to pervert stressful conditions. How to believe that you are good enough? Go to therapy. This can help you acknowledge what you need. Ask your friends to recommend someone they like. Hustle for joy. Work just as hard for fun moments as you do for all the other things. Take a walk, enjoy a bubble bath, or take a long lunch. All of that work will be there when you get back. Some personal time can recharge you and give you the energy to battle that ever-growing to-do list. Reorder your priority list. Prioritize yourself. Are you getting enough sleep, enough water, and good nutrition? You cannot take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself. The Lie. Something else will make you happy. Chapter 1. Life is not supposed to overwhelm you at all times. Life isn't meant to be merely survived, it's meant to be lived. Instances will inevitably feel out of your control, but the moments when you feel like you're drowning are supposed to be brief. They should not be the whole of your existence. The precious life you've been given is like a ship navigating its way across the ocean, and you're meant to be the captain of the vessel. The Lie. You are better than someone else. Chapter 4. Before passing judgment on anyone, Ask yourself why things might be this way. Judging is one of the most hurtful, spiteful impulses we own. Our judgment prohibits us from beautiful, life-affirming friendships. It keeps us from connecting in deeper and richer ways because we're stuck on the surface-level assumptions which we have already made. How to stop judging people. Have non-judgmental friends. We become who we surround ourselves with. When you're looking for a community of women, Look for the ones who want to build each other up instead of tear each other down. Police yourself. You will have to work hard on policing yourself if you are already judgmental. Whenever you find yourself judging someone, stop there. Instead of finding the flaws in them, think of their positive points and compliment them. Deal with it. Usually, our judgment comes from our deep insecurities. Understand what's going on with you. What's making you lash out at others? The first step toward becoming the better version of yourself is being honest about what makes you tick. The lie. Loving him is enough for you. Chapter 5. If you are in an unhealthy relationship, remember that loving him will change nothing. If you allow someone to mistreat you, they will continue to do so. If you're not able to value yourself, no one else will either. You should not stay with a partner who doesn't truly value you. Sometimes, Walking away from a toxic relationship is the best thing you could do. Many people make this mistake. They try to pretend to be someone they are not. Every day you're choosing who you are and what you believe about yourself. You are the one setting the standards for your relationships. Every day you have a chance to start over. How to be ready for a relationship. A sounding board. Talk to your friends or mentors for advice. Be prepared. Learn from the mistakes of others. Take advice from your parents and friends about your relationship. The lie. No is the final answer. Chapter 6. Do you know why some people are more successful than others? It's because when they went after their dreams and came up against a roadblock, when they experienced rejection, or when someone or something told them no, they did not stop. Successful people are successful because they refuse to take no for an answer. They became successful because they have never once believed that they could not pursue their dreams. When it comes to your dreams, no is not an answer. No is not a reason to stop. Instead, it tells you to slow down and reevaluate and then proceed. You should chase your dreams because if you won't do so, no one else will. 
You should not let your past dictate your future. Start today. You win the half battle by just starting. How not to get discouraged after being rejected. Audacity. It's audacious to ignore what other people are saying. This does not mean being disrespectful. You should just keep your eyes on your goal, regardless of what gets in your way. Alternate paths. Use the known to reevaluate the situation and pivot if required. Keep your goals in plain sight. It's easy to focus on your goals when you start, but it becomes harder and harder as you proceed. Make a note of your goal and keep it somewhere you could see it on a daily basis. This will serve as a reminder for you to keep pursuing your dreams. The Lie You Don't Know How to Be a Mom Chapter 7 This chapter is for the new moms or soon-to-be mothers. Being a mother is hard. When you are pregnant, enduring mood swings, vomiting, and postpartum depression are difficult to deal with. At this point, someone might think, what if I don't turn out to be a good mother? Being the mother, you share a special bond with your child. This doesn't mean you're going to be a perfect fit and won't make mistakes. It means that you need not fear failure. You will be able to find a way to deal with any situation. You just need to take care of yourself and your baby. How to take care of yourself and your baby. Find a tribe. Join a church group. Go to Mommy and Me Yoga or look online for a club to join. Look for a group of women who understand what it means to be a new mom too. Get out of the house. The best thing you can do for yourself, your sanity, and your baby is to explore your surroundings. Try to leave the scene of crime every now and then to change your mood for the better. Talk to someone about your feelings. Whether you choose your spouse, your friend, or a trusted family member, sharing with them you're struggling with can give you the support you need to overcome all the falsities that are popping up in your life. The Lie You are not a good mom. Chapter 8 Being a perfect mom is a myth, but being a good mom is possible. There isn't any one best way of parenting. However, imposing your beliefs on your child could be damaging. Try not to do so. Every mom is different. You need to accept that these differences are what makes you unique. With your uniqueness, you're adding spice and texture and nuance into this big beautiful soup of modern day parenting. How to believe that you are a good mom. Be friends with other moms. Make friends with the other moms your kids are comparing you to. Learn from them and leave those that do not strike authentic or practical for your family. Focus on quality. Don't stress about parenting. Instead, try to spend some quality time with your children. It doesn't necessarily mean going on vacations or buying them expensive gifts. Instead, it means including them in your everyday activities like cooking together, reading, playing, going on movie dates. When you focus your energy on them, that's when you feel content that you are doing a good job. The Lie You should be further along by now. Chapter 9 We all have our own goals, but when we cannot meet them as per the deadline, we sabotage ourselves. Our negative self-talk can be damaging to ourselves. It's also far more insidious because there's nobody there to stop it since we rarely even realize it's happening. Everything happens exactly when it is supposed to. Or maybe that goal wasn't ever meant to be yours. Maybe you are destined for something much cooler. Maybe you have to walk through this space you're in to be ready for that. Nothing is wasted. Every single moment is preparing you for the next. But whether you choose to see this time as something wonderful, the time when God is stretching you or forging you in fires hotter than you think you can withstand, all of it is shaping you to be the person you always desire to be. Today, there may be items on your to-do list, but you also have a long list of things you have achieved. Celebrate what you have achieved. Everything will come to you when it's the right time. It's highly possible that by not being where you thought you should be, you will end up exactly where you're meant to be. How to feel good after not achieving your goal. Make a list. Write down everything you've accomplished to date. When you force yourself to admit to all the things you have accomplished, you'll realize that it's wrong to be hard on yourself for all the things you haven't. Talk to someone. Talking to your well-wisher is always a great thing to do when you are feeling low. They will make you realize what you have achieved so far and what you are capable of achieving. Setting goals 
no time limits. Having goals is one of the best things, but your dreams shouldn't have expiration dates. As long as you're working toward the things you hope to accomplish, it shouldn't matter if it takes a month or a decade. The lie. You need to make yourself smaller. Chapter 10. The author proceeds with an incident from her life. Whenever someone asked her what she does for a living, she would say something dismissive like, Oh, I have a lifestyle blog. She hesitated in mentioning that she built a media company from the ground up and managed a staff of 11. That some of her clients are the biggest brands, that her website gets millions of visitors a month, or that she is an author and public speaker. She felt mentioning these made her look boasting about her achievements and made the person uncomfortable. Later, she realized, she is not the only woman who is making herself small to make others feel more comfortable. Working women sometimes have to fight their way through patriarchal systems. She believes that by feeling guilty about your achievements, you are doing a disservice to yourself. There are hundreds of ways to lose yourself, but the easiest of them all is refusing to acknowledge who you truly are in the first place. Don't let someone else's opinion of you determine your worth. How to become what you are meant to be. Be the best version of yourself. Stop thinking about other people. Get out of your way and stop focusing so much on what anyone else thinks. Focus on being the best, most loving version of yourself. Do something that you have always wanted to do. There might be something you always wanted to do, but could not do because other people did not approve of it. This is the sign. Just do it. Keep learning. Start consuming content you are interested in. You may not adopt every word of what you hear or read, but you'll certainly garner a bit of wisdom to help you with your season. The Lie You Cannot Achieve Your Dreams Chapter 11 We all fantasize about achieving our goals. Some fantasies are instrumental in helping us reach our goals. Some fantasies are silly, but they give us something to think about. One thing is true. All of them hold value. Maybe you want to cure a rare disease or have dinner with Oprah. Maybe you want to discuss politics with Roosevelt or try on dresses with Edith Head. The point is, you don't think about the challenge before you, you keep your eyes above the waves. How to achieve your dream Writing it down When it comes to goal setting, you must write down everything. If you're dreaming of something, writing down the words will help you achieve them. Saying it aloud by saying it aloud, you are reaffirming your goals. You are registering these goals in your subconscious. This helps you in getting to your goals faster. Creating a vision board. Make a note of your goal and put it on your work desk. This helps you transform your idea from an intangible form to a concrete one. It also acts as a constant reminder of where you want to go. The lie. You are terrible at what you do. Chapter 12. When someone praises your work, you become happy, but when someone criticizes your work, you feel bad. If that's the case, then your happiness is controlled by others. Someone else's opinion of you should be none of your business. These are powerful words for anyone who tends to hold others' opinions ahead of their own. When you are creating something, it's because you have the ability to create it. You have a story behind that, but you can't make people like or understand it. Not everyone would be able to relate to that story. How not to care about others' opinions. Minimize your contact with judgmental people. Stop being with people who always have a negative outlook of your work. Learn from the critics. When someone is criticizing your work, you should try to learn from them and move on. You should not be stuck with the criticism and take it to heart. The lie. You will never get past it. Chapter 13. Anyone who's ever been through something truly traumatic, regardless of how the repercussions have manifested, deserves to hear that they're not alone. The path through extreme trauma is one of the most difficult things anyone could encounter. But make no mistake, the only way is to fight through it. Pain and trauma are a violent whirlpool, and they will drag you under if you don't battle to stay afloat. There are many types of trauma, big, small, childhood, adult, but we all belong to a club we never asked to join. Horrific images might have seared into your brain. A gust of guilt might have exuded your heart. 
but you are still here. You are still here because you refuse to let anything or anyone decide what you get to have. You are still here because you refuse to let your trauma have the last word. You are still here because you will not let a nightmare have more power than your dreams. You are still here because you didn't allow the hard time to make you weak. You willed it to make you strong. No matter what happens, you must keep your head above the waves. It's difficult, but only you can do this. Even if you don't feel it at the time, the very fact that you're still breathing in and out means you're fighting back against the tide that wants to sweep you away. Don't let it. After a while, it will become easier to tread water. And finally, you'll learn to swim against the current. How to deal with trauma? Go to therapy. The process will not be fun or easy, and you will often hate sitting on a couch week after week reliving the trauma. But if you will not do that work, it will keep haunting you. Talk about it, not just with a therapist, but with at least one other person you trust. They will listen to you, and in doing so, they will take your pain and make the load lighter to bear. The Lie You Cannot Tell the Truth Chapter 14 The author starts this chapter with a question. Do I have the courage to tell you this whole story? She wanted to keep it close to her heart, to hide it away in the hopes that it will hurt her less if it stays hidden. But then she understands that when things are hidden, we give power to the fear, the negativity, the lies. When she was pregnant with her son Ford, she decided that she wanted to adopt a little girl someday. She had been placed in the Ethiopian adoption program for two years. Toward the end of the second year, she received word that Ethiopia was pausing its adoption program, and her agency told her to consider moving to another country's program. So, she entered the Foster to Adopt program. She got a foster placement with a medically frail baby and that the department did not know her extreme medical need. Unfortunately, after three months, the little girl passed away. However, after 34 days, she adopted twins. Four days later, at 10 o'clock at night, the police rang their doorbell. The officers informed her that someone had made an anonymous call to the child abuse hotline about her family for her previous foster care placement. As a result, twins were taken away from her. The Lie You are defined by your weight. Chapter 15 Who you are today is incredible. You have so many wonderful qualities to offer the world, and they are uniquely yours. It's not your weight that defines you, but the care and consideration you put into your body. Humans were not made to be out of shape and severely overweight. We function better mentally, emotionally, and physically when we take care of our bodies with nourishment, water, and exercise. You don't need to be thin. You don't need to be a certain size or shape. You need to be able to run without feeling like you're going to puke. You need to be able to walk up a flight of stairs without getting winded. You need to drink half your body weight in ounces of water every single day. You need to stretch and get good sleep and stop medicating every ache and pain. Learning to be healthy when you've never done it before might be hard if you've got a lifetime of habits to break, but the mechanics of it are very simple. And the version of you that's healthy and well cared for is worth every minute of that work. How to take care of your body. Use mattress. A lifetime of believing that your value, or lack thereof, is determined by your body is the result of a lifetime of negative talk in your head. You need to replace that voice with something positive. So come up with a mantra and say it to yourself a thousand times a day until it becomes real. Edit your media. Unfollow the models on Instagram. Stop looking at those pages on Facebook. Surround yourself with uplifting role models who focus on being strong and healthy. It does not mean women who do makeup tutorials or Instagram fitness models are bad, but there are reasons when following them doesn't make sense. Be smart about it. Preparation. Do you want to make sure you get in a workout tomorrow? Then you need to pack your bag today and schedule exercise on your calendar. If you wait until the last minute, you are not likely to achieve anything. Do you want to accomplish a healthier life? Map out how you'll get there. The Lie You Need a Drink Chapter 16 You don't need a drink. Need implies that something is essential, necessary. Without any alcohol, 
you will be alive, and the world would continue to spin on its axis. Drinking can be an attempt to escape, but you cannot escape the realities of your life forever. Having a drink will always be the easiest way out. It requires the least effort, but you get to pay an immense value. Have you seen strong people? They don't drink in their hard times because they're strong enough to manage on their own, and they know that drinking will probably make them weaker. You need to teach yourself better ways to handle stress and painful seasons. You'll have to learn and grow in a new area, which can feel discouraging if you've already walked through hard seasons in the past. But fighting through those times is how you get tougher. It's how you become the person you were meant to be. How to stop drinking. Learn about your habits. Identify what causes you to drink and replace it with a better coping mechanism. For instance, if you feel like drinking because of stress, try to catch up with a friend instead. Acknowledge your reality. Self-awareness is one of the most important skills to gain in the world. Force yourself to realize what is going on with you. Admit that you are doing something wrong. Remove the temptation. If you're struggling with how much you drink, remove access to alcohol. Actual struggles run so much deeper than simply having access, but it's much easier to fall into those temptations if they're sitting right in front of you. The lie. There is the only right way to be. Chapter 17. Imagine that. A large group of people who are committed to doing the hard work together, joining in to simply cheer on a community. You can see the beauty in that, right? And that's not even the best part. The best part about this time together is the difference in everyone's interpretation of the beats. They all learn the same moves, but every person's dance looks different from everyone else's. The girl who grew up doing ballet has movements that are more fluid and graceful. The guy who knows how to break dance rocks a style all his own. We're all practicing the same thing, but we do it in different ways. Our different styles are beautiful to behold. What if we don't presume to know the answers? What if we don't settle for the world we feel comfortable with, but push ourselves to seek more? It would mean that we would find genuine relationships with other people at a soul-deep level. We do not need to change our entire belief system to make this a reality. We need to be in a wider community, not because we're attempting to sharpen their clarity on a subject, but because we're hoping to soften the edges of our hearts. What does your story look like? Is it filled with all the same colors and lines? Every day, you get to choose the way your world looks. Regardless of what you were taught to believe, you get to decide where your story goes from here. Every year, you close a chapter in your story. How to have a different story. Acknowledge your position. Look around you. How much diversity do you see? Are you surrounded by people who are exactly like you? If so, seek new friends and experiences. Change the places you visit. Visit different places and meet people of every color and style and background. The Lie. You Need a Hero. Chapter 18. Everything is hard, but you should not give up, and slowly, so stinking slowly, you will get stronger and better. Push yourself to do something you never thought you would be capable of, and it will light a fire within your soul. It is only you who can achieve your goals. Only you have the power to change your life. You've always had the power. You just have to stop waiting for someone else to do it for you. There is no easy way out of this. There is no life hack. Just you and your strength and your desire to change. You not need a hero because you are your hero. Get hold of your life. Stop drinking. Stop hiding out. Stop being afraid. Stop giving away pieces of yourself. Stop saying you can't do it. Stop the negative self-talk. Stop abusing your body. Stop putting it off for tomorrow or Monday or next year. Stop crying about what happened and take control of what happens next. Get up right now. Rise from where you've been. Scrub away the tears and the pain of yesterday and start again. Girl, wash your face. This was released from For the Sake of Education by Flow Wisdom. If the content was helpful, make sure to subscribe.